Good evening and welcome to St Albans virtual open evening, three of three. And we'll begin this evening with a prayer. Lord, we ask you to bless our parents, carers and friends tonight with your wisdom and care. That we may find enlightenment and support in the decision we make about our forthcoming choice. Bless each Year 6 student as they make their way through this final challenging year of primary school. May they find love and peace in your guidance. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, I'm Matt Baker, I'm the head teacher of the school and the sixth form here at St Albans and this gives us a chance to replace the normal open evening tours with three open evenings this week with different members of staff that you can interact with as well as our online presence. Now as head I'm bound to say good things about this school. I'm biased, I love this school, but so did Austin when they visited. And they said the following things. Pupils understand the importance of the school community. They are polite, mature and considerate towards others. They respect and look after each other. Staff and pupils help new pupils to quickly become part of the school. And I think that's an incredible thing to say, a, a great thing for you to hear when you're choosing a secondary school. It's a brilliant testimony for us. They said that pupils feel safe at the school, that they attend regularly. The school offers pupils things to do outside of lessons. There are many clubs and activity days that allow them to explore their own interests. Pupils are proud of the charity events and enjoy being given the opportunity to make a difference in society. And that's a very powerful statement, because in a world that can be very selfish and inward-looking, our students are considerate, and they work for a common good. And actually over this week I've been thinking about this as I deliver uh, th these evening introductions. And what you will notice is, after lessons, a huge proportion of students thanking me for the lesson. <clears throat> and when we came back from our lockdown, and we were talking to students and seeing how they were. So many were asking how we were. And that's a powerful statement. That's one of the reasons I love being here. So, what are we about? What are we based on? Well, we, are, we, we pride ourselves on being based on the five pr principles of Catholic education. Number one, that we search for excellence. Two, that we celebrate the uniqueness of every individual. Three, we try our best to educate the whole person. Four, we support those with any disadvantage. And five, we hope to fully develop moral principles in our young people. Our curriculum. Our curriculum is traditional, yes, in many ways. So it has the strong foundations in the core subjects. But as you'll see over the course of this week and this evening, we are also a broad curriculum fun curriculum that allows students lots and lots of choice and I'd like you to ask questions tonight about that so you really understand what the young people come here to study. So we vary the students experience of GCSE. Some do more, some do less, some take completely different pathways through the school through alternative provision and that's our job working in tandem with you parents and carers to make the right choice for the young people. In terms of the environment, we really force upon them a disciplined but nurturing, engaging environment. That we discipline with dignity and that we care with integrity. And that forms the bedrock of high levels of respect and good behaviour that you need for a good education. And you will have to buy into that for something. If you want to send your young people here, that's central to what we do. So please take your time to look to listen obviously to this evening's presentations and any more from this week that you want to.
but also take a good look online at all the departments, the pastoral support, each of them have got a page on our virtual opening. There, an amazing amount of work has gone into that. I think it's a, it's a brilliant offer compared to our, to our normal open evening. So have a look, have a look at everything on there, click on everything, watch all the links, get a good feel for the school, and please this evening, ask questions. We've got a, we've got a live, live feed for questions. Ask us questions, and we've already had some in, but please add to, please add to those. Finally from me, we've also got some Zoom pick time slots for next week. So it's where a senior member of staff is free, and you can click on a Zoom link and join. So you can do that right now. You can join some smaller Zoom conversations with us if you have some specific questions and, and want to and want to want to share those. If those are more personal and confidential, certainly please phone us. We're always happy you can phone us at the school and ask for a senior member of staff. Enjoy the evening and please again say ask questions. Now I'm going to pass over to my assistant head teacher, Mr Horn. Well, good evening and welcome to our third live stream here from our school chapel. It's a real pleasure to welcome you all uh, to this evening's event and I hope you find this really informative. Uh, as Mr Baker said, my name is Mr Horn and I'm one of the assistant head teachers. My role in the school is to look after the children's behaviour and safeguarding. So it certainly keeps me busy uh, each and every day. Um, now, on our panel this evening, we have a number of uh, heads of faculty and we are really focusing on the more, more of the creative subjects this evening. And, and I'm delighted to welcome uh, Mrs. Wright, who is head of the Creative Performing Arts Faculty, Mr. Pattinson, who's head of the Technology Faculty, and Mrs. Broxton, who's head of the Business and IT Faculty. Uh, also with us is Mr. Deacon, who is currently head of Year 11, and he is here to talk about some of the partial care within the school. Uh, unfortunately, Mrs. Pickard, who is the school SENCO, uh, was due to be here tonight to speak to you about the SEN department. However, she's unwell, so I will be doing my best to try and fill in and give you as much information as I can on that. Well, I have a script anyway, so I'll read that out at some point. Um, but as I said, it is, it is a real uh, privilege for us to, to speak to you this evening and to give you a bit of an insight about our wonderful school. Um, I know for you as parents and, and students or prospective students who are looking at different schools at the moment, it's a really tough decision. And we want you to have as much information as we can possibly give you so that you can make an informed decision. Uh, and hopefully, having looked at what the school has put on its virtual school, uh, and we've also had our two previous live evenings that you're, you, you're, you're gathering lots of information that you're finding really, really useful. As Mr Baker said, there is an opportunity later on in the evening to ask some questions. We've had some already emailed in to us, but it would be really, really excellent if you could engage with us this evening and send some questions through, particularly for our, our, our faculty areas. Um, so. From my point of view, uh, I just really would like to offer you that really warm welcome um, to, to what our school is. And we feel our school is a really special place. It's somewhere that all of us actually, as members of staff sat on this table, have worked here for quite a considerable amount of time. And maybe that in itself says something about this school. We are all passionate about working here and we really do see St Albans as something as, as a family to us and a community that is really, really important. Um, I've worked here now for over 16 years and I've worked my way through from being head of PE up to the position I'm currently at now and I'm very passionate about this school and hopefully what you'll see this evening in, in when you listen to the various members of staff talk that, that that passion and that care comes through from us and we think that's a fundamental part of what we offer at this school. We always put the child first and we do very much take a child-centred approach in what we do with all of our aspects of school whether it's in lessons or the partial care that we offer. So I'm going to hand over in just a moment to uh, Mrs Wright and she's going to talk to you about the Creative Performing Arts faculty. There's a lot that goes on within that faculty and there's some really exciting things ahead so I'm going to hand over to Mrs Wright now. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, good evening everybody. Uh, so as Mr Wright said my name is Mrs Wright. I'm head of Creative Performing Arts faculty um, and that consists of four fantastic high-achieving departments. So that is art, 
music, drama and photography. Uh, the arts play a really important role in the personal development of the students here at St Albans. And our aim for our faculty is to create a culture of creativity, one that we feel passionate about, one that we want to celebrate. And that starts from the very beginning in Year 7, when students join us from their primary schools and there's an opportunity for them to be able to work in a whole variety of different disciplines within our creative and performing arts subjects. So in the words of Matisse, uh, the great French artist, creativity takes courage. And that is something that we use really every day to actually lead us in our teaching and our learning for our students. We aim to give students confidence by bridging the gaps between what has been learned at primary school and also the many creative adventures that we know that we will have here um, at high school. Essentially, our creative curriculum provides building blocks. So those are building blocks for learning that continue right through the different key stages and hopefully, obviously, through to A-level as well. Uh, the key skills that we offer through our very broad curriculum uh, allow students to be able to express themselves, to be able to work as individuals and also to be able to work in dynamic groups as well. Uh, the opportunities to perform on stage, to work with local dancers, uh, to be able to perform, be part of music department um, and orchestras, to create and to work in partnership with different practising artists such as Ardman students are all part of our offer here at St Albans. Um, as Mr Bakers um, said about our Catholic values, part of our job here is to celebrate the unique talents of our students. And we do that through the practical work that we offer, allowing for collaboration, allowing students to develop their communication skills, and also importantly, resilience as well. Uh, we welcome students' opinions and create opportunities for them to feel challenged. But most importantly, our faculty offers opportunity for them to be able to share and celebrate their successes. And we do that in all sorts of different ways. So that is through music and drama performances, that's through Christmas concerts, that's through creative shows that we have at different points throughout the year. Um, in year seven, students will learn to play the drums, they'll learn to perform, practice pantomime skills, They'll learn to dance, they'll learn to create characters and take part in physical theatre. Uh, they will also learn to draw, observe and explore the work of many, many different artists. So the influencers are far and wide exploring all sorts of contemporary and traditional contextual references. So great variety of different starting points for their learning in Year 7. We also celebrate their uh, work from other cultures as well. Um, so that might include samba drumming, reggae, Indian music, drama, dance, and many different multicultural artists. We also run lots of very successful after-school clubs, and actually our learning beyond the curriculum is a really important part of what we do in our faculty. We have really high attendance, and we want to encourage all students to take on those creative opportunities. And they're successful because we have specialist teachers and because we also have specialist facilities. We have fantastic drama studio, we have amazing art rooms, we have a brilliant music department with specialist music equipment, we have a dark room, we have photography studios. And that's a really important provision for our students to be able to, to learn well. So as well as success in the classroom, our work extends beyond the curriculum um, and that means that students have the opportunity to work not just um, in clubs and that sort of thing after school, but also to work in partnership with different people outside of school. So that might mean working with university students, it might mean working with the new Wolsey Theatre, and last year we ran a really successful faculty day where students got the opportunity to then work with all sorts of practitioners, um, that led different kinds of events in school, and that was really very successful. 
So finally, I just want to end by saying that um, as a head of department for creative performing arts, um, you know, I, I am very proud to teach here. I'm very proud of our students. And our goal here as a faculty is actually very simple. So our goal is to provide excellent teaching and learning for all students and to provide a future for our creatives. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pattinson. Good evening. How are you? I hope you're well. Um, I lead the Faculty of Design and Technology, and shortly I'm going to tell you about uh, the teachers that you will meet in the faculty, the way that we work, why designing and making is important, and I'll mention a few of our past students who have gone on to great success. But the first thing that I'd like to say is how fortunate we are to be part of an academy trust who value the creative subjects and a supportive leadership team who are working hard to get our students back into the workshops as quickly and as safely as possible. Creativity is in everything, especially in schools. It's the process of having original ideas that have value and it draws on every single subject. And designing technology is the one place where aspects of those subjects can be pulled together to solve real-world problems, and goodness knows we need a good deal of that at the moment. There are four subject areas in design and technology. Graphic products, resistant materials, textiles, food preparation and nutrition. All the students in year seven and eight study each of those subjects each year on a ten-week rotation. During your time in our faculty, you will learn a lot of different skills. Communication skills, drawing skills, model making skills, how to use hand and power tools, and you will experience working with woods, metals, plastics and fabrics. You will learn kitchen skills and how to prepare nutritional meals. And all of that learning is supported by cutting edge specialist technology. We've got laser cutters, 3D printers, industrial standard digital software. We've got vinyl cutters, heat presses, sublimation printers, lathes and embroidery machines, and lots, lots more. Our teachers are highly skilled. They're experts in their field, and they've all had successful careers in industry before becoming teachers. And we bring that wealth of practical experience into the classroom. Mr. Kelman is a, an expert in uh, medieval fabric printing. Mrs. Lewis is a, uh, an illustrator and a printmaker. Miss Dow ran her own clothing business. Um, Mrs. Williams worked with the British fabric designer Orla Keeley. So we've got lots and lots of skills and experience and we love passing on those skills and nurturing the next generation of young designers and entrepreneurs. We don't just teach to the test, we teach beyond that. A few of our past successors, Francesca Palumbo, she's a fashion designer and ranked in the top six young designers in the country. Amy Gooding is a graphic designer who's worked for on clients such as Boots and designed the Goo uh, chocolate pot packaging. Adam McLeod is an interior designer for the automotive industries and works with Mercedes. Jenny Roussel works for the Ministry of Defence. She's a submarine design engineer. Claire Bruce is an engineer at Ford UK. And George Coleman is an architect who's worked on a, in China for a couple of years on a vast array of groundbreaking projects. And we stay in touch with them. So finally, I'd like to share with you a text that I received from George just last week, and this wasn't solicited by me. He said, hi, how is everything going? I thought I'd just get in touch and thank you, because I'm constantly thinking about how I got where I am today. And it partially all began when you were teaching us. And I still remember what you said, something along the lines of, everything has been designed. So if you ever need a speaker or anyone previously at St Albans, please don't hesitate to ask. I feel a duty now to inspire and make the people of Suffolk, or young people of Suffolk, aware that they can really go anywhere and achieve anything, even as cliche as that sounds. So that's what we do. We teach beyond the test. We teach the next generation. We try to inspire and be creative at all times. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. Mrs Broxton. Welcome to St Albans. I have two roles here. Firstly, as a Year 7 form tutor, 
and second as a head of faculty, which covers computer science, creative eye media and business. I believe that St Albans provides an enriched curriculum full of diversity and delivered by outstanding teachers. I have been here for 14 years now and I do really enjoy interaction with the students and see them develop their character and their skills as they move through the school from year seven to sixth form. My role as a year seven form tutor is one to support uh, or as support for students. Um, my current year seven form group is my third tutor group here. I help them transition between primary and secondary. We're the first point of contact should you have any concerns. You can just drop us an email or even phone the office and um, we will get back to you. We have a structured registration period where information can be passed to students. We discuss a variety of topics and look after their general well-being. We are also in a position to pick up on their worries. Students might have several concerns about starting school at uh, secondary school and so we're there to pick that up and discuss those points with them and set them at ease. We also participate in daily prayer and reflection, discuss news items, participate in general knowledge quizzes, prepare for charity events and vote for house captains and form reps. I am extremely proud of my Year 7 form. They were the first form group to go through to do their charity event for St Botolph House. Um, and I was really proud of them that they had picked up and um, managed to raise nearly £80. Within the faculty, uh, computer science and I media are taught together as part of Year 7 and 8 curriculum. Throughout Year 7, students will cover both subjects. As a department, we, developed, we decided to develop the curriculum in that way so students can understand the difference between computer science and I media. That helps them make that decision with their pathways in Year 8. At the beginning of each unit that uh, students will, will participate in, we assess those students and we revisit that assessment at the end of the, assess uh, at the, end of the unit. Um, and I have to say I'm extremely proud of the progress that students make. Historically, we have excellent progress of our students and our GCSE re results reflect on that. We're very fortunate to have a bank of computers uh, dedicated to computing right across the site within the school. We also have additional um, hardware that we can actually use, such as drawing pads. All students are provided with an email and they are given storage area for their work. Computer science is delivered Sorry, for, stu for computer science students, they're given the opportunity to learn Python programming. With the new J277 computer science specification, students also learn how to ad adapt a program, debug for errors, and simplify algorithms. It's also delivered at A level. We, deliver we developed links with Game Angular, BT, and Derivco to strengthen students' understanding of the wider world. This may be in the form of speakers within our lessons or meeting students down at um, Game Anglia conferences, seeing young game developers in action. iMedia students will specialise in developing their skills in Photoshop and image editing and animation software. Previously, the department has taken a number of Year 9 students to the National Computing Museum in Cambridge where we have been able to participate in hands-on activities and it strengthens their understanding of where technology was many years ago and how it has developed and why we are using it in the manner that we are today. Finally, our successors, our students uh, we have students working for the BBC in production, web development as their own business, an animator in the software house, 
and candidates making it through the government cyber discovery online security challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Broxon. I'll now hand you over to Mr. Deacon, who's going to talk to you a little bit about partial care. Yeah, good evening everybody. My uh, name is Mr Deacon. I'm a current PE teacher at the school. I'm a mental health first aider and current head of year 11. So you might say jack of all trades, master of some I hope. Um, I've been at the school now for 10 years so I've had a, a lot to do with the school. I've been a cover supervisor, a progress leader, obviously a subject teacher and now a head of year. And I currently have worked with my Year 11s for almost three years. As one of the five heads of year within the school, we each have a unique yet integral part to your child's academic progress, as well as their overall development as an individual. As you could imagine, there are many changes that our young people experience throughout their time here at St Albans. And we centre everything around our school ethos of learning, respecting, caring. Our role as head of year allows us to work with your child for five years as we work the full secondary um, cycle from year seven all the way until year 11. Potentially our students stay on for an additional two years into year 12 and 13. This approach enables strong relationships to be built between ourselves and the young people of St Albans but also places us in a uh, best position to support their full journeys and their life experiences here. It also means, as current head of Year 11, I will be expected to go through with the next cohort of Year 6s going into Year 7, and therefore will play a big part in their induction process. To further aid support in our head of year roles, we work very closely with um, Mr Horn, who's the head of pastoral care and designated safeguarding lead. We work very closely with our student support managers, Mrs Land and Mrs Arthur, Catherine, our school chaplain, and together we aim to provide a comprehensive pastoral community for all of the students here at St Albans. Regarding my specific role as current uh, head of Year 11, I have a slightly different part to play as I work very closely with the deputy head, Mr Corliss, to ensure that obviously our young people are prepared for their upcoming GCSE exams, which involves a lot of rigorous uh, data collection and a lot of additional student support and intervention. Um, also within that role, it enables me to work on a daily basis with form tutors to ensure that their students are best supported and they've got the best interventions as well and that these young people are getting what they need. However, one thing that all our heads of year have to oversee is the individual and collective behaviour within the year groups. Our main focus is to celebrate the individual success and the collective su success within the year group. We do that through various reward systems such as house points, prom points, praise postcards and even student of the week, which involves prizes as well, which are supported through stationary equipment. Obviously on the flip side of that, we have occasional infrequent um, incidents of poor behaviour, which we have to deal with, and we try and do this through a restorative justice, justice approach. With this considered, each of our students are expected to follow the school's behaviour policy, which can be found on our school website it is designed to maintain a sense of community that is respected and valued by all of us within this community. And we try and enable our young people to develop and grow into well-rounded individuals. What I'd like to do is just finish with a, a closing quote from Ofsted back in January 2020, which I believe summarises the quality of our pastoral care here at St Albans. The school's motto is learning, respecting, caring. All staff want pupils to do these three things well. Pupils want to do well because they are told they can. Adults listen to what they have to say. Pupils say that they appreciate the support they are given. Pupils feel safe at school. Most pupils say bullying does not happen often, but if it does, it is tackled extremely quickly. Pupils attend school regularly. They want to learn, so they work hard and behave well. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Deacon. Now, I have to do the, the SEN part, as I said at the start. Mrs. Pickard, unfortunately, is unwell, and I am the, the slightly less glamorous alternative. So uh, I will be reading out um, her prepared speech to you. Um, I know the SEN department um, are, are a highly valued department within the school and work incredibly hard to support the young people here. And I know that should you have any specific questions, they would be more than happy for you to make contact with us directly. Uh, you may have some questions for us this evening, which you may want to kind of pass through. But if you do have anything specific, I know uh, particularly if your child has um, specific needs and you want to kind of discuss that uh, in, in a more kind of private way, um, please do contact us at the school and we will, we will endeavour to get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, but um, the inclusion team at St Albans aims to ensure that all students are able to participate and achieve in lessons. This means that there are many difficulties due to special educational needs such as dyslexia, ASD, hearing or vision impairment, mobility challenges, we will work with teachers to support learning. We offer the same level of support to students whom English is not their first or home language and those under the care of the local authority. If you do have an education, health and care plan in place and wish to name this school, it is very useful to invite our SENCO to the annual review in year six. The types of support we can provide range from specific and direct intervention with reading, spelling, social skills, speech therapy, fine motor control and additional English lessons for those who may struggle as it is not their home language. We have a team of teaching assistants who support in lessons and are able to organise lunchtime activities such as Lego, Jigsaw or Chess Club. The school is a dyslexia friendly school and teachers will differentiate and make adjustments where appropriate. We work with a number of professional organisations including SIS and the school funded speech uh, and language therapist. The school also have a foundation learning base that is managed by a primary trained teacher. This base is used to deliver the curriculum to a more baseline level for students who may, who may be struggling to maintain progress with their peers. This is a transition area and is used flexibly and as appropriate for individual students in year seven and year eight. We believe in celebrating strengths and overcoming barriers by supporting students to develop independent learning in many different ways. Um, just to, to add about the foundation uh, learning base, that is something that we actually introduced last year and, and actually has been incredibly successful. And, it, and again, it's a, it's a proud innovation that the SEN department have really brought to the school and we feel has, has brought an extra level of support for some of, some of our, the young people that, that have come to St Albans who at the moment just aren't quite in the place to access the full curriculum. And what we want to do is to provide that level of support so that they then can make the progress and be successful. So that's everything from us as a panel this evening. I hope you found what we have presented to you uh, interesting and inspiring. Um, I hope you would agree that the staff that we have here are incredibly knowledgeable and passionate about their subject areas. Uh, and we will be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, so we've uh, we've had a number of questions in tonight already, some of which have been answered previously on the other two evenings, but certainly worth revisiting some of them. Um, one of them is, is quite a broad question. It actually talks about what equipment <laughs> will my child need? So, would anyone like to answer that? I mean, we're, we're all sort I'll of in a broader sense. I'll, t I'll tackle that one. <laughs> Right, so your typical year seven child um, brings everything that they need with them for their entire school life. That's, that's, the, that's normally day one. Um, so they'll come with the biggest rucksack you've ever seen, full of chock full of equipment, and then that soon, that soon uh, pairs down. But obviously in terms of uniform, um, our uniform supplier is Coes. Uh, so we have a, obviously a close link with Coes in town and Although things are a bit different at the moment with COVID, um, COES work very closely with us as a school and obviously with other schools within the area to facilitate uh, people get, getting into the store and you know, being able to kind of 
uh, meet your needs. And I'm, I'm sure if you've ever shopped at Coach, you know that the customer service there is, is absolutely second to none. Um, so uniform um, is all kind of taken care of through Coase. Information about that is on our website. Uh, certainly in terms of uh, academic equipment, obviously they need to make sure they have all of the stuff that they need in terms of pencils, pens, rulers, calculators. I've got Mr. Berry sat there as a maths teacher, kind of making sure I mention calculators. Um, you know, rulers, uh, you name it. I'm sure there's specialist equipment that my colleagues could probably talk about that, that students have. Uh, I know from my background being a PE teacher, um, they obviously they need all their PE kit, their football boots and trainers and et cetera, et cetera. So there is a whole host of stuff. All of that information is on our website. Um, and obviously we, we want to ensure that, you know, before your child comes to us, that they are fully prepared because as I know, a year seven never wants to get it wrong. Does anybody else want to kind of add any sort of particular equipment from your departments that students would be, you know... You forgot protractors. Protractors. <laughs> Is there anything in particular that um, I've missed? Get a, get a good geometry set. <clears throat> and I think yeah. um, in-ear phones as well for yeah. personal use when we use tutorials at mm -hmm. school. I mean, we do have a stationery shop in school as well, yeah. so they can buy basic equipment from ours. We also have an art shop as well, so they can buy sketchbooks, pens, pencils, charcoals, all of that specialist equipment. So there are opportunities to buy those things in school. But actually, if students come with the basic set of equipment, a basic pencil case with pens, pencils, rubbers, rulers, compasses, they've covered everything they need to start with. There we go. Great, thank you. Um, will my child be in a form with other children who they know? Um, Yes, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll take that one again. So when the process that we start with transition, obviously we uh, try and start that as early as we can. So once we know who has applied and what places have been allocated, we start that process very early. Now we have approximately 40 uh, primary schools feed into us because we are a non-catchment school. We take students from all over the South, Suff South Suffolk area. Um, so we have students coming from Felixstowe, from Woodbridge, Stowe Market, and all, all over the Ipswich area as well. So it's uh, quite a challenging task, but every year we communicate effectively with the primary schools to, to, to understand those students, what their various needs are. And in particular, one of the things that we look at when we're putting the form groups together are who students should be kind of buddied up with and paired up with. What we want to try and achieve is that if possible, a child is with somebody that they already know. That obviously does help them settle in. Um, believe it or not, there are some children who come in as the only child from that school. Um, but what we find at St Albans is because of the community spirit and the friendliness of the school, that the children do settle in incredibly quickly. And we work very hard. Uh, this year, we, we actually had an induction over two days to allow the year sevens to be in school all to themselves. And so they had the time with their form groups, with their form tutor to actually settle and feel and feel really comfortable here. And, you know, by day two, it was like they'd been here forever. Um, and the difference in the children, you know, having been away from school for such a long period of time with COVID, it was a very unusual situation. But I have to say children are incredibly resilient. Uh, little little beings and they just bounce back so quickly and, and, and we're really glad to be back at school. How do you communicate with parents or carers as a school? Do you want to do that Mr Deacon? Yeah so as, as a head of year obviously having full contact with numerous students within the year group you know where we have up to about 160 students a lot of the contact you know can be made directly a lot of phone conversations emails sent home, um, also letters sent constructed home as well. With regards to contact, obviously we try and make it as appropriate and as regular as possible um, for numerous reasons as well. It might just be for a, an update on how your son or daughter is getting on, it might be just to discuss academic progress, it might be behavioural. So obviously lines of communication we like to think are almost always there, but like we say, it's, it's usually done via phone if we can, and also through letters home and emails, generally. 
Okay, yeah. just just to, yeah, do you want to add something? Well, I was just going to add that um, I'm a year 11 form tutor, and um, the parents for, the, for my tutees are quite happy to contact me directly via email, sometimes by phone, but, um, you know, the children might go home and share something with them that they just feel that they need to be reassured about, so they can get in touch with me directly on email. They don't have to go through any formal channels yeah. about that. I think also to add as well, obviously there's a lot of liaising between myself as head of year and, and the form tutors, and like, like all the other heads of year as well, and obviously between us we make a, a conscientious decision to, to decide who will contact home based on the need of the child mm -hmm. and based on what the situation is and what contact we need to make. Um, part, I mean, partial care, I think, as both Mr Deacon and Mr Patterson have mentioned, is, is a really important uh, and a fundamental part of what our school is all about. And that, that holistic care of the child is, is really, really important to us. And so as, as Mr Patterson uh, demonstrated, I think the, the role of the form tutor and building the relationship with, the, with that group of young people that they see every day. And I know Mrs Broxton spoke about, you know, her pride with her form group. You know, you build that relationship as a form tutor and, and often the form tutor is that initial port of call for the parents and might be that first link. Um, and it's really important to us that we do build that positive relationship with you. Another thing that we also use is something called class charts. So class charts is a way of us um, also communicating with you as parents. You can download a free app and it shows you essentially three things. You can, be you can uh, track behaviour of your child, good, good, bad or indifferent. You can uh, see whether they've been given any detentions. I'm sure that won't be happening, so don't, don't really worry about that aspect of class charts. But you can also um, track their homework as well. And so you can see what homework they've been set, by which teachers, when the deadlines are. And so from your point of view as a parent, you've got a really clear idea of what is going on in school, how behaviour is going in lessons, if they have had any sanctions, but also what homework's been set. And so from your point of view, you can be on top of things and also the children can, can see what, what's going on and manage their own. Because what we're encouraging them to do as young as young people as they get older is, is to become more independent, is to take more ownership over, over their own behaviour and their own lives. And so this is another tool for them to, to develop that aspect of their lives. Thank you. Can Year 7 students join the school council? Do you want me to answer that? Yeah. Actually? yeah. <laughs> uh, only because it, um, we've just been sort of um, talking about that. Um, there's a variety of um, roles and responsibilities that um, year seven get involved in and, and that carries on throughout to, through to um, sixth form. So we have currently in my form, in, in the other year seven forms, we have already nominated two students as their house reps and so they organise the charity event um, and we also need to now look for reps to uh, represent the form, any ideas that they have, and they go forward to Student Voice. So Student Voice then actually has um, a tiered system where they will have, um, each form will be represented, but then you will have one nominee for the whole year, and they will go forward to discuss things in more detail with maybe some of the senior managers. So, um, and I do believe they are thinking about another um, representative, which we haven't really got much uh, information for about at the moment, but they can certainly get involved in a lot of things and make their voice heard in school as to how they would like to see certain aspects of school life develop. Um, it might be that they want to see um, a different storage area for bags and coats and things like that. It might be that they even organise a school trip and then it's formed into a, a competition and they will pitch that as a Dragon's Den element to be able to um, go on a school trip. I mean, just one example of student voice. Um, we had to change our PE kit slightly because the the the, the shirt that we um, provided for the students was no longer being manufactured. And so when Coes came to us and said, "Okay, these are the alternatives, and these are some of the sort of kit that we can supply," we took that kit to the student voice representatives, gave them an opportunity to have a look at it. You know, 
kind of tear it apart, try it on, what have you. Um, and they kind of made the decision on, on what they wanted their, their new PE kit to look like. So you know, that's that student voice in action and giving them the opportunity to kind of have a say in how the school is being run and, and, and what they want. Okay, thank you. Uh, another good question in. Uh, what is the policy covering the use of mobile phones uh, as they can be a great distraction? Okay, right. Uh, mobile phones, don't, don't we love them? Um, they're wonderful bits of technology, and I would never say to anybody that they shouldn't use technology. I think the issue with phones is not the phones themselves, it's how the young people or we as individuals use them. Um, so our policy is very clear. You know, what we do appreciate is that some of the students who come here, as I mentioned earlier, do travel quite a long distance. And we're only too aware that parents in this day and age really like their children to have a phone with them because it makes them feel more comfortable and secure that they can make contact with their child. However, um, we do feel phones can be a distraction in school. And so our policy is that when the child gets to the school site and when they enter the school grounds, they need to switch their phone off and put it away. Phones are not allowed out in lessons unless that is under the direct uh, instruction of the classroom teacher. So it might be, for example, that Mrs. Wright in her, in her art lesson might have done something fantastic, which is obviously a given, and the children need to photograph their work to provide it as evidence, okay? Or something along, something along that Sir here in technology may use the, the phones for them to do a piece of research because it's just easy and convenient for them to do that on their, on their smartphone as opposed to getting a bank of laptops out. So there are, clear, there are some real advantages to using the technology, but it has to be used in the right way and it has to be done under the direction and the instruction of the teacher. Okay. Uh, at the end of the school day, once the bell goes and the children are leaving the site, they can then switch their phones back on again in case they are trying to then get in contact with mum or dad or whoever about arranging pickup and, and so forth. Um, question about the buses here. How will my child know where to go for the bus home? Okay. Uh, it depends, really, obviously, where, um, where they're going to. But particularly with our Year 7s, we were very mindful this year because of the way uh, we've been restricted by COVID and we hadn't had the children up to the school in the normal fashion in June. Um, what we did in the first sort of week or two of the term, we actually walked the children up to the various bus stops. Now, where we are located in Ipswich is actually very close to, to the, a lot of the main links um, that either take children off to Felixstowe or into the town centre at Tower Rampart. So we're quite fortunate in terms of our location that actually we have bus stops very, very nearby within walking distance that are easily accessible. And the advantage is, is that there are very regular buses sort of every 15 to 20 minutes. There are bus links kind of taking children in, into, into the town centre and then they catch their, their connecting kind of buses from Tower and Parts. Thank you. Uh, how do we pay for school dinners? We've got the cashless catering system. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it's cashless catering. Um, all the children are set up when they first arrive at the school. It's based on a thumbprint. Uh, and then once your account is set up, through parent mail, you as a parent can then um, upload uh, cash to that, that system and then you just top it up as you go along and they just put their thumb thumbprint on when they've got their their meal. And um, does the school have a magazine? Well we use contacts but that's yeah okay I mean there isn't a student magazine and I think that would be something that would be really valuable. I know Mr Deacon has worked on on something and I know Miss has here with Creative Performing Arts. So there are aspects of this, and I think it would be good to touch. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that, just for a moment? Yeah, I mean, this is something that I started in my first year as head of faculty. We actually have a Creative Performing Arts uh, newsletter, really. Um, and what we do is use it as an opportunity to really just celebrate, actually, the work that goes on in the faculty. So, you know, there are so many things that happen in this school that, you know, we can't possibly publicise absolutely everything. But, you know, we want you to be able to hear the successes. So we just use that as an opportunity to um, show you the wonderful photographs that are going on with photography, to show you the photographs of students actually working in the classroom, to, to celebrate them if they have performed at snake moltings. Just a few of the examples of the kind of thing that you would expect to see in our faculty magazine. Yeah, yeah. and just to sort of touch base on some things. So as head of Year 11, some of the stuff I've been doing with my year group over the last couple of years is... 
what is a pixel, called a Pixel Edge initiative, which is basically an initiative that is designed to try and improve um, five course life skills in leadership, organisation, resilience, initiative and creativity. And we try and do that through self-accredited tasks where the, uh, the students can actively choose a task for those skills and log and, and record what they do. So with regards to some of my students in, the, in their year 10 experience, they actually designed um, a newspaper called The Green Grapevine, which had quite a bit of success throughout year 10, um, which was really useful within the form groups, which they used to read. It celebrated a lot of the successes. It updated a lot on, of information on sports and clubs that ran throughout the year. Um, but also, it is available on the website to have a little look at, and as parents, it's a really good place to go. And, and with next year's Year 7, I would certainly be looking to use that initiative and, and promote that. So, yeah, have a look on the website, and you should see lots of information regarding that. Is the, is, the, is the hashtag Green Grapevine going to go hashtag viral now? Hashtag Green Grapevine is definitely um, going forward. Just, just a couple of other things just to mention. Mr. Corliss did, did mention contact. So in terms of our, uh, our regular kind of contact with parents, we send out a newsletter which kind of gives various updates on different aspects of things that are going on around school, messages from the head teacher and, and so forth. So there is that. We also have a number of uh, social media outlets. So we have a, an official school uh, Instagram account but I know some of the other faculties have their own as well or are developing those currently um, so we do try to engage with what's going on around school uh, via Instagram so if you're interested and want to see kind of what we're doing uh, that will give you a bit of a flavour um, so yeah I mean I think on the on the actual screen it does give our our uh, Instagram handle on there so yeah do do give us a, a look and um, we've got a question about drama um, it actually relates to do we do drama? Yes, we do. But it also says about do you have school productions? Uh, we do have school productions, but obviously at the minute with COVID, we've got lots of restrictions in place, so it's not possible. What we're hoping for later on this year is actually a virtual show. Um, so that means we can keep our students safe, but you still obviously get to celebrate the wonderful work that goes on in drama. And then we also have plans for a big school show, but... Um, at the moment, those are, those are ideas. Uh, we do have some funding for that as well, so it's a bit of a case of watch this space, but that is definitely coming. And we've got a fantastic new head of drama that's really, really keen to, you know, to push that through because we know what an important experience that is for all of our students, not just our drama students, but actually for the, the whole school so that everybody has their different role to play in that. So it's definitely um, coming in the future. Thank you. Um, we've got one about um, school trips here. Do you have a ski trip? <laughs> oh. Funnily enough, we do. <laughs> um, yes, we have a ski trip. Uh, I try to run it, actually I organise a ski trip, I try to run it every year um, and it just depends sometimes on how much interest we get. Um, the last trip we ran probably was a couple of years ago. Now, we didn't run one last year, again, COVID restrictions and, and so forth. But on average, you take around about 40 to 45 students. Uh, we've taken them off to Austria uh, in mainly, and that's kind of our go-to destination. Although we have been looking at organising a trip to Italy. Uh, fabulous week, um, amazing sort of experience to take the children kind of out of their comfort zone, try a sport that maybe they've not tried before. Uh, take some of the staff out of their comfort zone as well, um, but it's really good fun. Um, yeah, we have a we have a we have a blast. It's incredibly tiring, um, but but we love it. And uh, yeah, we wouldn't sort of you know we wouldn't kind of it's a it's a it's a really it's a really great week away. Um, you know, a long time on a bus, but it's so worth it when you get when you hit the slopes. So yeah, definitely. And that's normally February half term. term. Yeah, very half term. So I've been fortunate enough to be on four of the. Um, ski school trips that uh, Mr Horn's organised and I uh, can say they are fantastic experience for the students but also for the staff as well. Yeah. Uh, we've got a sports, well there's a couple of sports questions actually, I think, unless they're from Glasgow, I think, I think they mean netball, they've said netball. Okay. Um, is there a netball team for year seven? Do you want me to take that yeah, one? Go, yeah, yeah, yeah there's a, a netball team throughout year seven all the way through to year 11 and I will honestly say I think our netball at uh, the school is 
highly regarded around Suffolk actually and I think that we get a lot of I think the students get a lot of expertise from our other one of our other subject teachers Miss Seeger um, it is a really popular club lots of students seem to attend we get a lot of support in terms of the older year groups as well who get who get actively involved with the coaching role as well but yes there's there's going to be lots of opportunity to play netball and lots of opportunity for fixtures and and training sessions and and a good opportunity to progress. We've got another question about sports. Do girls play football? Is there of football course, teams in of St. course Albans? they do. Yeah. Of course they do. And again, with regards to just clubs in general from a sports perspective, it's more <coughs> excuse me, it's more of a case of, you know, we obviously welcome as many sports as we possibly can and we try and make it as accessible for, for all amongst all the year groups. Um, regarding clubs and fixtures. You know, that will always depend um, on numbers. So in previous years, we've had high numbers for girls' football and we've, had, and we've ran fixtures. Other years, not so, because I guess the intake has been more focused on a different type of sport. So, you know, it does vary year to year. We would never not look to run a sport. It would just obviously always depend on what the interest is from that year group. Thank you for that. That brings our questions to uh, the end. Okay. Well, thank you for those of you who've watched. I know this uh, this evening's event is being re uh, recorded, so if you do take the opportunity to view this back later, uh, really would like to say thank you for, for watching. Uh, I hope you found this evening informative and inspiring. Um, we really want to give you as much information as we can. So if I could just urge you to head over to our virtual school. There's lots of interactive stuff for you to kind of get involved with. Video showcases from our faculty areas, examples of work. There is a whole host of stuff for you to, to, to kind of get your teeth into. And hopefully that answers a lot of your questions. Should you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us at the school. Or there is also the opportunity, as Mr. Baker said, to book onto one of our Zoom pick time uh, events, which are taking place next week. So we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much.